gynecology in England and Wales, and it's reaching crisis point. And he said it's clearly not religious and ethical reasons because of the nature of England and Wales. It's clearly, in his judgment, because of the, the distaste that the young people have in having to deal with abortion. And the one place in Britain and Northern Ireland where there is a lot of people applying for obstetrics and gynaecology is the Queen's University in Belfast. And as you no doubt are aware, in Northern Ireland, abortion is a criminal offence. And he believes it is no coincidence that that is the case. Look at the UK. Two super supervisor midwives in Glasgow have been told that in spite of their conscientious objection to abortion, they must oversee other midwives performing abortions on the labour ward. The Society for the Protection of Unborn Children in the UK is committed to the tune of £350,000, which we don't have, we're trying to raise, to support those midwives. The risk for SPUC is great, while the threat to those two brave ladies, their livelihood and their right to work in accordance with their civilised ethical standards, is absolutely overwhelming. Just to give you an idea of how things are going internationally, uh, my colleague <coughs> Pat Buckley, who's here, does a lot of work at the United Nations. And in Geneva, they were discussing what was called a technical report on maternal mortality. And it was put forward by the UN Human Rights Commissioner, Nafaneth Mpile. And what she was seeking in that report was to make it unlawful for parents to oppose abortion for their underage children. Now that is already a huge problem in England and Wales where government uh, representatives in schools up and down the country, including religious schools, including Catholic schools, get access to children and children are told they have a right to abortion without their parents' knowledge or consent. It, there is an attempt at United Nations level to make it unlawful for parents to oppose the abortion of, uh, on, on their children. And equally, it would become a criminal offence for health professionals and administrators effectively to oppose abortion. And if you want chapter and verse and the wording of that, Pat will be able to summon it up from you on his iPhone as quick as light. It is truly frightening, the attack on conscience. But you see, once you deny fundamental human rights to a category of the human family, and once you say, like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and David Cameron and Tony Blair, argue that there should be universal access to abortion. How can you have universal access if troublesome people who object to killing fellow members of the human family get in their way? You can't. And so it's entirely logical and inevitable that this is happening. And it will happen very quickly in Ireland. Um, what Ireland will find if abortion is legalised is the coarsening of society's morals, uh, moral sensitivity, and the encouragement of sexual relationships outside of marriage, in which betrayal of a spouse or existing partner or children is followed by abandonment of a new sexual uh, uh, abandonment of the new sexual partner. In addition, it's not to be wondered at that societies which had legal abortion have come under increasing pressure to legalise euthanasia. In promoting the hard cases which are invoked to justify the killing of the innocent, eugenic abortion, killing people with disabilities, is frequently cited. Here we have the devaluation of people who have lives not worthy to be lived. And <clears throat> This has reached the point of killing.
counting the financial cost of those people in the government document to which I refer. Legal eugenic abortion prepares the ground for legal euthanasia, with abortion in general, while abortion in general provides the basis of encouraging us to think that we are entitled to do evil, that good may come. We are entitled to kill at least some classes of innocent human beings so that we can disencumber ourselves of unwanted social, economic and personal burdens as we see them. Thank you.